move right. to the next leg, which is that uh, I'll also uh, encourage Mr. Vimal Kejriwal, Managing Director and CEO of Case International to bring in his perspective about the Middle East. Melji, always a pleasure to have you on ET now. Thank you for joining us. For the benefit of our viewers, I will first break up your order book. 69% is domestic, 31% is international. Within international, very large part is coming from Africa and Middle East. Could you first outline for our viewers that what is the current business opportunity for KEC International from Middle East and looking at the numbers which we have in terms of where this entire region is moving, how large this could be for KEC? Uh, good morning, Nikunj, and thanks for having me. So one thing is that when you look at my order book breakup between international and India, in international, we are largely in TND, transmission and distribution. We just have one order in railways and one order in oil and gas while we're trying to expand in civil. So effectively, that 30%, 31% is all transmission. Now that, that's one, one point which I wanted to clarify. Secondly, I think Middle East is, is really becoming big for us. And uh, we are seeing a large order and tender pipeline. I think right now we have tenders of around 30,000 crores to be quoted or under tendering right now, which is almost $4 billion. Uh, bigger ones to me is KSA. Kingdom obviously is the biggest one. And UAE also is very large for us. I think there are two major geographies where we are seeing business, which is already there and coming. Well, I would understand, you know, we keep reading about how there are massive, uh, you know, under capacities globally in TND. Part of Middle East is also facing that. In fact, some of the global companies are now facing shortages to really complete their orders. Is that benefiting companies such as ours, which has a reasonable exposure globally and a big part of that in Middle East and have an upward bias? So, do you see higher growth from that side? 100%. I think on the TND part, uh, let me put it this way, we have never had it so good. Uh, today, my TND order book is more than, uh, you know, 50% of my order book. And of which this year, I think we have got orders of uh, close to 11,000 crores in TND, around 6,000 in India and 5,000 international. So that's very clear that TND is, is growing very well. Uh, part of it is on the back of global shortages also, especially if you look at the North America market and more specifically United States, that was a market which was actually earlier served by Turkey and China. Today, with all the geopolitical issues and other problems which these countries are facing, most of the demand, whether it is for transmission towers, conductors, or even insulators, has now shifted to India. So not only we, but most of the other, other manufacturers also are, are benefiting uh, for TND. That's one part of it. The second part of it is that with our Dubai facility where we are manufacturing towers with shortages in other places, we are also seeing a lot of demand for tower supply from Dubai into the nearby countries and also far off countries like far off regions like Europe. Now your margins, your business while in terms of visibility and order book from Middle East and especially Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is very strong. But do you see a scope of margin expansion now that you've set up a capacity in Dubai? So there will be obviously some positive impact uh, on the margins when we serve the nearby uh, areas from uh, Dubai. Because Dubai, you also have a, a bit of a fiscal advantage where you don't have to pay duty on the in, in the supplies into the other countries. So there is some advantage definitely out of it. But let me put it that way that even India today, the market in transmission is growing like anything. So the margins uh, will be elevated both in India as well as international market. The CAPEX in Middle East, as per the data, what we have, which is Vision 2030 Saudi Arabia, big expansion which is happening in Qatar how essentially Oman and even Kuwait are looking at energy transition. How do you think next three years would be different from last three years? Because suddenly, post the Ukraine and Russia war, this entire region has seen a huge influx of uptick which has come via high energy prices. They have got capital, 
and they have the ability and now there is willingness to spend. So how do you see the next three years being different from KEC from this region itself? So first of all, Nikunj, I understand that Kingdom is now coming out with a 2040 vision plan from 2030. They feel that they have done enough for 2030, so they are coming out with a much bigger plan of 2040. In fact, last week when my team was uh, with the, our main client, South Electric in uh, Riyadh, they told us that they are coming out with some more, la more and you know, larger and larger projects. So I think one basic thing which is happening in this country and even UAE is the project sizes are becoming much, much larger. And clearly, the way they are looking at the development of NEOM and all the renewables, uh, especially in Saudi, UAE, and now even in Oman, I think these are the three countries where we are seeing a lot of demand coming in on account of energy transition. One is for solar projects and also for uh, transmission projects. Well, you know, the other thing we wanted to understand was the implications on your books. Because as we understand right now, while most projects are high margin projects, um, the Middle East margins are around 9 to 10%. What's the scope of scalability in this margin range, say, in the next uh, three to five years? So, actually, if you look at margins, to me, the margins are dependent on a particular project, not in region, not in... Uh, so to me, there are projects in India where we make more than that. There are projects in Saudi also where we make slightly less than that also. So margins are more, I, I'll say, more project-specific. There may be projects where you have a bigger advantage, you're already there, you have establishment nearby, or competition is different. So to me, 9 to 10% is a standard margin which will be available even in India. So I don't think... Uh, uh, Middle East is going to give me more margins than what I am having in India today. Had you asked me this question, maybe two years back, I would have said, yeah, Middle East may give me more margins than India because India was, was depressed. Today, with the capital spending in India, I think the India market and the margins are also going up. And, um, you know, last uh, question from you, Mr. Kejriwal. Uh, last quarter, we saw your ultra-high KVA part of the business saw massive growth. It, it became talk of the industry. Do you see uh, the momentum continue because all this, uh, you know, energy transition, etc., which you are talking about in the Middle East, all of that is actually powered on the back of ultra high KVA. So, if you look at our order intake, uh, largely uh, it is up 400 KVA and above. So, South is all 380 KVA, they don't have 400, they call it 380. India is all 765. Same thing is happening in, in UAE and Oman, where there are large projects of, you know, uh, ultra high KVA. So very clearly what, what is happening and, and the background is very clear. They are coming out with large solar parks and these solar parks are at, you know, far remote locations, etc. So they need to transmit this power to, to distant places and for which I think HVTC and ultra HV becomes uh, the, the norm of the day. All right. Appreciate your time and uh, thank you for joining us. Well, what we are getting a sense... If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.